Hi, I'm Alex, and this is the Fanatic Fulcrum. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. The Fulcrum is a central hub where students, staff, faculty, and people outside of Sacramento State alike can tackle the tough issues of today through mutual interests of things like TV shows, conventions, and franchises. This is the first ever video cast of the Fanatic Fulcrum and the finale. My guest today is Brent Sands, the creator of Impound Comics, a locally based comic book store that features Sacramento based superhero and former MMA fighter Anthony Ensley. So let's get into it. Well, hi, Trace. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, thank you for having me. Can you tell me a little bit about Impound, uh, how you got started, maybe? Um, Impound is a comic book series based out of Sacramento. Um, I thought of the concept probably back in 2018, spent maybe a year and a half. Um, writing backstories, thinking of character relationships, and then uh, launched it November 9th, 2020. And um, there's a lot of inspirations behind it, uh, not only specifically like him, other characters in the world. Um, I pretty much grabbed my favorite things and uh, changed them. Some were comic related. I made him an MMA fighter because Sack has an MMA culture. Um, stuff was also inspired by friends and family, you know. Um, so there wasn't one factor that inspired uh, Impound. So you're, oh, I don't know when this is going to come out, but your one year is coming up. This Sunday. Okay. Do you have anything special planned? Uh, we're, I mean, we're releasing Impound 3. Yeah. So um, it's a book release. Um, we're, we're pushing to have that day considered Impound Day in Sacramento, where it's similar to like St. Patty's, where you'll wear green or green drinks. Um, it will always launch something in the future. I want to have like a um, like a carnival or a festival on that day, um, but that's not going to be this year. But that's the goal of it. All right, I love the I love the big dream. So it's it's Marvel, it's DC, and then it's Impound, right? Yeah. Is that the dream? Yeah. Could you? So there's been like, well, never mind. Like Marvel and Justice League crossover comics. Have you ever read those? I haven't. Oh, okay. I haven't. That'd be cool though to see them like take the take the stage with. I never even seen that they have like official ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I never, I've never even really officially seen a crossover of Marvel DC. Maybe I just wasn't looking hard enough. But, like, to me, it's like they always intentionally don't cross over. It almost right. seems like, like there should have been the game Marvel versus DC, but instead it's Capcom versus Marvel and Mortal Kombat versus DC, you know? But I have to look at that. Now, does, does Impound have his own game? Uh, it does have an app game. Okay. Um, and it's kind of based around, like, a, the concept that I was thinking of was a little bit of the original Simpsons and um, Ninja Turtle game, but mixed with how uh, Call of Duty Zombies is like a never-ending wave. Yeah, and more and more keep coming, so that's it's like a mix between those two. Okay, how did that how did that get started? Um, I just started searching for app developers. Uh, found somebody who already had a game that wasn't this one, but it was very close in functionality, and I had them reskin it and change certain things to make it make sense with impound nice now when you say you wanted to be like <laughs> simpsons or ninja turtles can you explain a little bit about what that means just like well there's it's just a arcade game that they both have that's they're just similar styles okay um just in the street and a bunch of villains just keep coming you just destroy them as they come is it like 2d almost it's 2d okay um now you're okay i, I love i love sacramento obviously like, i go to sacramento state i've been born and raised here my entire life um you're located in downtown commons yeah is that like do you get a lot of traffic? How is yeah. that? Yeah. I mean it's 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 the best location probably in the city of Sacramento. I would think the only place traffic wise that might be able to compete is Arden. Um, but realistically it's that's best case scenario, you know, probably for anybody. So what's your what's your spiel? Somebody walks in, what do you how do you entice them in? Um I mean we 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 do a lot of social media promoting. Anytime someone walks in, we ask them, do they know what this is that they walked into? A lot of people are just brought in by, like, the vibe. Um, and we we stand outside, pass out flyers. If there's an event, um, we do a lot of face-to-face -face on top of social media promoting. So it's a mix of every stone we can turn over. How many how many events would you have, like, in a, maybe, a, like, a month? In a month? There's a lot. I mean, it's, it's going to be two, maybe three a week. And are we talking events from like downtown commons or events that you put on as no not business? for that i put on oh, okay. uh like events at the the arena like a king's game gotcha like a disney on ice yeah things like that okay have you had 
Now, okay, I've seen your Instagram. I know that you have a lot. But how, how often does somebody who's famous, like with status, come in? Um, it's a, it's pretty frequent, you know. Um, rather it's someone with the Kings organization. Um, a lot of time it's like people who are performing in Sacramento, like have a concert, um, either at the arena or a memorial. Um, but it's it's becoming a thing, you know. So I would say, at least five times a month, someone. Uh, some sort of celebrity comes in. Okay, five times. That's more than like once a week. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh my god, it's, it's pretty frequent because some some people are like cu real customers too. You know, like um, Luke Walton, the Kings coach. He's came in a few times. Okay. Um, Matt Barnes has come in a few times. So it's like it's not even sometimes now at this point, just stopping by. They're actual customers, like frequent buyers. Nice. Um, so that's really cool. Yeah. Have you? Who's the Who's the person you're like, still starstruck by that you're still like, wow, I got to meet them. There's not so. There, I I don't really get starstruck. Okay. I would be more. There's only a few people in the world that I would see and be really excited. Like I'm excited that they they come at all, right. but like, it would have to be like bro, Obama, Denzel Washington, Michael okay. Jordan. Absolutely. Um. I've been in the entertainment industry a long time, so almost like being starstruck could be counterproductive okay. to your relationship with someone of, of note. That's fair. Um, so, you know, I treat them like people. Yeah. You know, um, and that's just that's just kind of how I am. That's okay. That's probably better, like, especially yeah. if you're a business. If you were, just, like, sitting there trying to get their autograph, like, yeah, they probably exactly. wouldn't be it'll as be, professional. It would be strange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I was really I excited. I do ask them for a photo, though. Okay. But uh, normally they're also happy to do that. Yeah. Um, but that's that's simpler, you know? and it's also more publicity than anything. Yeah, I mean, if, exactly. If, they understand mm. it's like promoting the company, definitely. Versus it's not for me personally, you know. I actually the reason you got on my radar is because Julius Thomas the third, the guy who played Hamilton, yeah, when he came here was did a feature on your business. Yeah, um, he did. He, he um, I guess I don't know if I seen him first, um, but he said he had got a flyer from us. So I don't know if he was just walking in Doko and someone handed him a flyer. Uh, but then he he emailed us um, asking could he do it. And it was it was crazy because I'd never seen Hamilton. I I I'd, I'd never tried to see it. And the night before, um, one of my aunts was telling me how good that play was. I don't even know it's in town. And then I checked the email, and it says Julius Thomas III from Hamilton. And I'm like, is this the same Hamilton that she was just talking about? And then it was. And then he came the next morning, and I sent the picture to her. She was like, you don't deserve that. You didn't even go watch Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, hey, I mean, but but he's uh I'm 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 actually meeting with him tomorrow, not in person, and we have a Zoom meeting, uh, because I might actually try to turn impound into a play. Um, so he kinda inspired me to want to do that. Cause I did check after the fact and, and really looked into what he was doing. So there's opportunity of us collaborating now. I love that. Yeah. I would watch the shit out of that play. I appreciate it. I yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> so, I don't. I don't want to digress from Impound Comics too much, but I. I did not. Are you familiar with Daredevil? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So, are like so. His dad is. He's Matt Murdock, the lawyer. Mm -hmm. His dad is battling Jack Murdock. Yeah. And are you familiar with his origin story? Yeah. Is yeah. that? I don't want you to like run into a copyright claim or anything like that, but I love you, Daredevils. They wouldn't. I, they wouldn't be able to do that anyways. There's no. There's nothing that you can. T you can't tell me I can't be inspired by something else. That's not even a thing. Marvel. Marvel will blatantly tell you we made Thanos because we saw Dark Side. It was like we saw him and we wanted somebody like that. Okay. And then we made him. It's there's you can't. You know what I mean? There's no. Even Daredevil, it's there's no original storytelling anywhere, a hundred percent original. It's you take something and you put your twist on it. Okay. There's gonna be something in everything written that you can find that's similar. You know what I mean? Yeah. Stories have been written since many ancient times. So a lot of that is inspired. I mean, Marvel would get sued for taking Thor. That's a whole Viking history. Right. You know what I mean? But yeah. um as far as is that from Daredevil, um, I would say a little bit. Um, it was more based on uh, Pulp Fiction, um, the, the Bruce Willis's character being with a Ving Rang's mob boss trying to mess up his fight or, or pay him off. Um, and I think a lot of Christ Jones was inspired by maybe Ving Rang's on Pulp Fiction. But uh, that was more, 
but I understand also that's also a similar story with Daredevil. Right. And I love Daredevil. Um, but as far as do I like when I get in trouble? No, it's, that's that's so cool that yeah. you and like based off of something else. But when I read it, I thought of one thing, but exactly. you're thinking of another thing entirely. And that happens with every character and every story. Anything I put out, someone says, "Oh, is that from this?" And I'm like, "No." But you know, I can see why you would say that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, people see Seraph and, and compare him to Snake Eyes all the time, and I actually hate that comparison. But but um, it had nothing to do with him but it had a lot to do with the foot soldiers and Ninja Turtles. I'm a massive Ninja Turtle fan. Um, yeah, <laughs> love Ninja Turtles. I mean, that's why my app game was also kind of like their game. Yeah. But um, oh my God, that's so it's cool. from the Sorry. foot soldiers, but people see snake eyes. Yeah. And it's like, what do you do? Yeah. At the end of the day, they just look like ninjas. Um, and it, it just is what it is. I don't, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. You know, I don't like the snake eyes comparison, though, only because I don't like the character snake eyes. And not that he looks really cool. Um, like I see why people say that, um, but I, I'm I'm against uh, characters that go to other cultures and they become better than that people in that culture. So and not like in a I'm not super anti-American. Like I'm not. It's, it has nothing to do with that. But I think if you're gonna make someone a ninja or make them from a, something based in Japan, someone Japanese should be the best, not an American soldier. Right, be better than everyone in Japan. I don't like that type of character where it's just kind of like the more pushing the American, yeah, you know what I mean, dominates over other people. So that's why I don't like that comparison because I think they did the new Snake Eyes movie really well, though. They kind of yeah. realized that and got rid of that, yeah, uh, stereotype. But um, that's why. Did you so you saw the new Snake Eyes? Movie? Yeah, I haven't. Did you so you were. Totally approve of Henry Golding's casting. Absolutely, okay. that was that was that's how he should be, um, you know, at least like half Japanese. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like not not, you know, if characters like a Tarzan, you know what I mean? Characters that, like I said, like they're in someone else's culture, but they're better than them. I just don't like those type of characters. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Now, do you watch a lot of movies? Yeah. Okay. Now that's because uh, I just want to say this because I mean you're here at Sac State. Like you were a film major at Sac State, correct? Mm -hmm. Do mm -hmm. you do you do you graduated? Yeah. Okay. So then what did you, what was the plan after that? Was the plan always impound? No. Okay. Impound. Impound came after. Uh, from from my film degree, uh, I, I wrote movie scripts. A lot of scripts that are, were meant to only be movies. I wasn't writing comic books at all. And then I wrote a few novels. And then um, Ryan Coogler, do you know who that is? Yeah. He went to Sac State too, and uh, he was he was we're both in the same program, but he was he was a senior when I was a freshman. Um, but then he went on and did Black Panther. Yeah. And then that was what kind of made me want to do uh, a comic book instead of writing, because I, I never wanted to be a director. I don't want to be on his end. I wanted to be on the writing end. Um, but I was like, maybe I'll write a comic book instead to build the audience first. Um, until you eventually get to the impound movie at some point. Um, but it was more of, I keep writing these movie scripts and I have no way, no way, uh, idea how to fund them. So that was more of like, let's do it a different way to get to the same goal. Do you want Ryan Coogler to direct like an impound movie? If Absolutely. That? Okay. That's the, that was his, his success inspired me to want to find success in this. So it would only make sense to me. I want an entire impound movie where almost majority of the people involved are from Sacramento. Or Ryan's not from Sacramento. He just went to Sac State, but he shows a lot of love and support to Sacramento. But um, him directing it is an actor named Keith Powers. Um, that's a famous actor. Him probably being impound. Uh, Mozzie's music on the soundtracks. Uh, Sweetie on the soundtracks. Like just a bunch of Sacramento-based or inspired people yeah, all involved with putting this together uh, would be really fire. Have you have you casted uh, like a lot of the impound characters already? Uh, well, we're shooting a movie trailer. Cast it. You mean cast it as famous people? Well, like who he, I would he, like yeah. to play it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't. Well, I like I like the Sacramento thing, so I don't want you to like turn around and say like Michael B. Jordan should be impound or something like if that. If Michael but. B. Jordan wanted to be impound, he would be. Impound. It's <laughs> not like a, I, like that would just be ideal. Okay. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not going to I'm not going to be you know narrow-minded on this is how it has to be done if you know 
if a big studio gives us the right budget and we can do it right, and if they had their suggestions, I'm not against it as long as it makes sense. Um, so, nah, I'm not closed-minded on who plays what. Um, Christ Jones is my main villain. A lot of people say he looks like Terry Crews, so that's fine. I posted him today compared to Terry Crews, and everyone's tagging Terry Crews right now. So Maybe he'll reach out. Yeah, exactly. Who knows? Uh, there's To me, there's... There's uh there are wrong ways of doing things, of course, but there's more than one right way as well. So I don't like I said, I don't have any set in stone who's gonna be who. Um, I'm open to a lot of different actors. Definitely. Um, this movie trailer that you said you're you're filming, is that f just like a two minutes thirty seconds kind of thing, yeah. or is it? And you're hoping people see it and then we get on the map and make a movie. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's to get funding to finish it. Definitely. And it might not necessarily finish the movie yet. Maybe I'll make enough just to do an animated movie who knows but it's 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 a budget building project definitely yeah i love that that that's how deadpool got made yeah I, okay you are familiar with that story absolutely okay um so who's see i want to ask this but i don't know if we'll put it in the video who's your favorite marvel character marvel character yeah hulk really yeah okay i'm surprised by green i haven't is green impounds green Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you meant there's another character. No, named that's okay. what inspired the green is is the Hulk. I love that. Oh my gosh. Do I you... don't like I don't really like uh over the top superheroes. I don't like the always good, always just heroes. I like like more anti heroes. Um most of my characters are more on the fence of of evil or good or evil. And then like characters will figure out and stay good, but it's still good to an extent. Um I don't have any like true blue never kill anybody heroes like if you're that bad they're gonna they're after you <laughs> you know what i mean so that's more like why like characters like hulk spawn um who what's your favorite Deadpool. Like, okay hulk is my favorite and then spawn is my second what's your favorite like anti-hero movie because they've done a couple anti-hero movie probably deadpool okay yeah deadpool is fire definitely uh, I love the Spawn movie too, but I couldn't watch it again. Like they need to redo it and, <laughs> and make it modern. Is it so? Hulk is your favorite superhero. Deadpool is your favorite antihero movie. Now, like, is there a third like best superhero film you think of all time? Uh, the superhero film. Yeah. The, the best superhero movie to me is Dark Knight. Okay. Yeah, Dark Definitely. Knight is is that was perfect. Um, I'm not a big Batman fan, but I'm a fan of all the villains. Uh, Joker is my favorite villain. Um, I love Two Face. They are both in there. Um, all of them. Catwoman, Poison Ivy, Penguin, like the, like their villain lineup is incredible to me. So a lot of my villains, I get inspiration from Gotham. Okay. Uh, I, I kind of like try to paint uh, Sacramento like a Gotham vibe. Um, but it's, it's funny that I'm not a fan of Batman, though, himself. But I'm a fan of everything else that comes with it. You know? Yeah. Um, do you think Heath was the best Joker? Uh, yeah. Okay. For sure. Do you think Joaquin Phoenix was good? Joaquin Phoenix, that's the solo Joker movie. Yeah. Uh, I think he was really good. I really hated that movie, though. Okay. A lot of people love that movie. I hated that movie. Like, it just, and it just, it wasn't, it was really good acting. He did a really good job as an actor, but, like, Joker's a genius. I didn't see how this guy is going to outsmart Batman at all. Like, he just kind of seemed like, you know, he just lived at home with his mom. He just was getting by. I didn't see the the who joker really is you know and then i also didn't like uh the age difference between him and batman like bruce wayne is still like a small child yeah and it's like how old is joker gonna be by the time batman becomes batman definitely you know it's like he's like 40 years older than this kid you know what i mean so yeah. i just i didn't like the the story but i loved the way he was acting yeah if that makes sense I love that. I like that a lot. So then you you definitely pay attention to the story. So that means you you make sure. Actually, you said this to me a little bit before we started. But, um, or actually, you might have said it on the podcast already. But if if you disagree with something that the artist does, like you're not publishing like one of these comic books. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least that page. If they did the whole book wrong, I would have caught it before they did the whole book wrong. <laughs> That's but weird. but I, we do it page by page. But yeah, if something's wrong, I ask them to redo it. Um, but I normally catch it sooner. But sometimes you don't know. So like sometimes they, they, they send line art or sketch art and I can approve it that way, but then I don't know how they're gonna color it until they color it. So sometimes the colors will be off or they made something, just something that now that there's life to it, I see something that I didn't see before that I didn't like. Um, 
but it's not usually anything as dramatic as changing the entire page. It might be one panel, you know what I mean, or something like that. But we get each other now. They understand my characters and what we're doing. Um, so that problem doesn't happen often. Okay. Um, what's like a process? How long would it take to come out with one of these books? Uh, generally like three, four months. Okay. Something like that. Uh, it depends on the illustrator though. Uh, my main illustrator, Vash, he'll probably push one out in two months. Um, he's really, really fast though. And you just can't expect everyone to be, move as quickly as he does. You know, it's, it's a process. Um, but two to four months, I would say. Okay. Generally. Do you plan on doing like uh have you have you been to A one comics? Yeah. Well, well they'll put in like Spider Man one through seven and mm -hmm. it'll be like one book. Yeah. Or like you'll you can An anthology. Buy it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I already have a cover for it. Sweet. Okay. So um that's just kind of stuff like that a little bit is a little bit further up the road though. Um when we put out more of the same issue. But yeah. Do you plan on ever having like a Hulk themed character? Uh a what themed character? A Hulk themed character. Probably not. Okay. Um that is a little over the top, like you were mentioning. And it's, uh, yeah, and it's, and it's, I don't know. I'm, I will never say never, um, but but I, I'm not, not, as of now, no. I haven't planned anything like that. Now, do you, you, you've said this to me before, and I asked you if it was kind of a spoiler, and you said no. I asked it when I visited your shop. Um, you plan on having them all come together. Yeah. At some point or another. They're already, their stories are already tied in. It's just um, a reader may not notice it yet. Right. Um, but it's already, they're already why this is this and, and connecting in certain ways. Um, but no, that's, that's, that's not a spoiler. I've, I've already posted pictures of them together. Or, you know what I mean? It's, um, it's, I, I kind of took like the, uh, the Dragon Ball Z route where like, um, we all knew Majin Buu was coming at some point. We didn't know it, was, it took years for him to actually show up. But we've been seeing pictures of him, and we knew what he looked like, and we knew what he can do, but we had to wait to see that. So, nah. So how do you plan, like, if you don't like over-the-top heroes, like Decimus, for example, your Thanos, looks like he's, uh, like, a force to be reckoned with. He looks yeah. like he's as powerful as Thanos. How do you expect, like, a Sacramento MMA fighter to beat him? Well, Impound gets powers, though, too. Right. You know, he doesn't stay regular guy that's just this far in the story okay um but it's it's gonna be in a similar fashion you know there's heroes that are gonna come together okay um as of now only alina and impound are heroes that i've put out uh, but there's other characters that will also join like a justice league or like a avengers type of fashion can we like state hornet exclusive here first? Can you say any of those, or should we say wait? any of what the, other the, characters? the new characters that are coming? Uh, well, there's Lady Monarch. She's already been promoted, but she was only promoted in my children's book series. Okay. Um, but her adult version story is uh next after Impound Three. Okay. Um, some of them no, I can't say because they're uh you've already seen them, you just don't know. Um, but um, their story of how they become whatever hasn't been told yet. But uh, I posted some of them. Yeah. Can I guess one? Yeah, go ahead. But, like, will you tell me if I'm right? Yeah. Is it the detective? No. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, what are, can I ask what his powers are going to be? Or uh, laser vision. Okay. Uh, he's telekinetic. Um, strength and flight. You know, everyone in my world is kind of really powerful. He, he's going against four people that are already powered. Okay. So, he since he's alone, I have to make him really strong or he just wouldn't even be able to compete you know what i mean right. um but um he's not gonna he's not the strongest in our in our world though but uh impound is a different kind of just um guy there's a lot of backstory to, of him that still hasn't been told um, i'm doing a novel on him but he's he's a dude that everything in his life has always been stacked against him um and he's always found the will to overcome it and still turn out to be a different or a decent person um and then when it hits the fan harder than it's ever hit, it's his journey of coming back to being humanized again, to being overcoming it again. It's something that maybe most people wouldn't be able to overcome. Um, so that's more of his thing is is he's never quit anything in his life, no matter how bad it's gotten. And it's gotten really bad for him before Impound One. Um, grew up in foster care, you know what I mean? He has a lot of negative things in his life um yeah and that's why he's my favorite though 
Definitely. What? Why did you wait so long to give him his powers? I uh, wanted people to just know who he was. Okay. You know, um, I think stories are just better that way. Yeah. Uh, when you when you actually see the person first, people care about Impound more than they care about other characters that we've put out. Um, not necessarily that they like them better, but they they see him as a person more than they'll see Seraph as a, por- a person. They they see him as a powered ninja. Right. Um, but uh, just humanizing him. Well, yeah. I see Seraph like got he, he got taken when he was a kid, so I feel yeah. like. He didn't have a chance to like see. Oh man, I love this. Sorry, I love the. Saroff got taken as a kid, but um, what I think some people didn't take from that was because it was it's it's hard to tell sometimes that story in a short amount of time. Saroff got taken from a bad situation as a kid though, so so to him that was his life. The Order of Shadows aren't evil though. When they came to where they came, that's because those people were evil and they were ridding the world of it. And that's why they took him because they didn't know he was even there. So it wasn't necessarily a, um, it wasn't really a kidnapping as much as it may have came across or how he takes it as. Um, but it was the world he knew. So that's why he hated that so much. Okay. They I really rescued him. Yeah. Um, but he didn't see it that way. Okay. Which is why he is who he is. Revenge, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, why, why the Catholic uh like i guess allegory with christ jones um in history villains have thought of themselves as as godlike they think of themselves as gods they they try to enforce their influence by presenting themselves as some sort of deity um and that's what he does um he actually went through the process of of dying and being reborn so to him he really believes that his return was for that reason. Um, but uh, some of that, I guess, was inspired maybe by Spawn. Uh, some was just inspired by history, you know, uh, maybe Thor. I thought of that. I, I didn't, I wasn't as conscious about it when I did it. Um, I just liked that idea. So uh, that was just what came to me. Are we ever going to get a, an origin on Christ Jones? Um, I, I, I don't know. Okay. I think about it all the time. Um, I was thinking maybe telling his origin through the impound story. Okay. Um, I was thinking I've thought about making a book called Christopher Jones, um, but it's not going to be anytime soon if I do. Do you know how he got his powers? Yeah, absolutely. Could you tell me? Nah. Okay. His power is his powers have a lot to do with Decimus too. Okay. So I can tell you that. Okay. Um, but but I can't explain in depth. That's okay. That, don't want to spoil it. But that's one of those connections that you were talking about. Exactly. How the characters are connected, we just don't know yet. Yeah, I mean, you would, you, 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 if you go look back, they're saying the same thing when they okay. explain it. You know what I mean? On what, what it is. Um, but but it's just not blatantly obvious. But it's in there. You have a like a vibranium metal, right? What, what's that material called? Uh, rivium. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah. is that maybe like one of his arms is rivi- rivi- sorry, uh, rivium? Yeah. Okay. Is that, or can you not say that? Uh, it's in Impound 2, brother. Okay. <laughs> so Impound 3 comes out November 7th. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can pre-order now. Um, can you tell me a little bit about, this, um, we're nearing the end here, but um, like the, the convention that you have on February 27th. Uh, February 27th, we're throwing our first con. Um, we have uh, the first Black Power Ranger, Zach, Walter E. Jones as a special guest. Um, we have a lot of different comic creators as special guests. Um, and it's just the first of many. Um, it's just one installment um, of growing the brand, which we're trying to do more than just the books. Um, we have a lot of stuff uh, like that that we're gonna be adding and and moving forward with, with pushing the universe, you know. Um, Impound is like, the the whole idea of it or the whole concept it's super big and it's it's so much stuff i'm trying to put together and uh like i said we're talking about doing a play you know we're talking about movies um you know the goals of this brand are just so big i'm just trying to put it together one piece at a time yeah. you know uh you can most people, when they start something or do something, a lot of people, obviously, not a lot of people do this. Right. Um, but it was always meant to be big from the gate. You know, most people, I would say, see five feet ahead of them. And, you know, we're trying to see so far up the road, you know, um, 
I might not even be able to accomplish it like in my lifetime. Um, and I don't mean that like in a dark way, but it's like, you know, Disney, biggest entity in the world, biggest brand, whatever. Uh, you know, Walt Disney died in 1966 and it wasn't like a freak accident. It was just his time. His goal was to always have Disneyland and didn't live long enough to even see it open. Um, and look what it is today. Right. So um, it's just one of many, you know, trying to make sure we're always heading forward, you know. It's, and, and like I said, uh, hopefully I can see it become its peak, <laughs> you know. Uh, but I'm thinking of who will be who will be my successor one day already, you know. So that's just the mindset we have uh, at Impound Comics is, is the future, always the future. I love that. Yeah, thank you. All right, sweet. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you. Where can people find you? I mean, other than 500 J Street. Uh, 500 J Street, <laughs> Suite 155 in Doco, um, impoundcomics.com. Okay. At Impound Comics is our social media. Um, and that's that's pretty much it on all platforms. Okay, absolutely. Well, thank you. for Yeah, thank you so much for stopping by. This has been great. Thank you. Thank you.